over 150 million years ago, the primal lands of prehistoric Oklahoma were stalked by a giant predator. This ferocious beast was a dinosaur, a theropod of immense proportions that has baffled paleontologists for generations. Known as Sorophaganax, or possibly Allosaurus, this unique creature remains a paleontological mystery to this day. Despite years of research, the history of this animal has been a mess. Nevertheless, we do know that it was a big animal, with estimates for its body length ranging from 10.5 meters 34 feet to a staggering 14 meters 46 feet, making it a rival in length to even the mighty T-Rex. In 1995, scientists calculated a 40-meter estimate by scaling up bones from the closely related Allosaurus, suggesting that the original suggestion of its huge length was likely correct. However, due to the relative incompleteness of its fossil remains, it is difficult to get an absolutely accurate measurement. The best estimate for its average size is around 13 meters. It is estimated to weigh up to 4 tons, making it a candidate for largest Jurassic theropod predator, with its main competitor being Torvosaurus. However, it's important to remember that we are dealing with a small and poor sample, and animals tend to vary in size. As a large predator, Sorophaganax must have had an exciting lifestyle. It was discovered in the Upper Jurassic Morrison Formation, a well-known formation which was home to other famous dinosaurs such as Stegosaurus, Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, and Allosaurus. In contrast to Allosaurus, Sorophaganax is a rare find, making up less than 1% of the theropod fauna of the Morrison Formation. It's challenging to figure out exactly how this creature lived given the lack of sample, but information can be inferred from its relatives and environment. The Morrison Formation displayed a variety of fauna, dominated by massive sauropod dinosaurs such as Apatosaurus, Barosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Brontosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Diplodocus. The diversity in Ornithischians, including Camptosaurus, Dryosaurus, Nanosaurus, and Stegosaurus cannot be forgotten. Some suggest that Sorophaganax preyed on juvenile sauropods or scavenged when provided with the opportunity, perhaps using its far larger body size to intimidate smaller Allosaurus into giving up their kill. Alternatively, smaller theropods and ornithopods may have been on the menu for the giant Sorophaganax, as well as the occasional Stegosaurus. If hunting style can be inferred from its close relatives its serrated teeth were likely used to rip apart the skin of its larger prey causing heavy blood loss, and smaller prey could have easily been dispatched with the weight and power of its jaws. It's possible that it used a more hatchet-like motion when biting, bringing its top teeth down on its target as it bit down. The rarity of Sorophaganax in the fossil record reflects what we would expect for an ecosystem containing such a predator as it would be difficult to sustain a large population of big-bodied carnivorous theropods. However, smaller Allosaurus would be more populous, as they required less prey to survive. It's also possible that there's some kind of preservation bias against the larger Sorophaganax, meaning that they were generally less likely to fossilize than Allosaurus. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned the confusing state of its classification. This history has resulted in a lot of confusion over the years. The initial traces of this dinosaur's existence were discovered by two cattlemen in Oklahoma in 1931. They stumbled upon some large bones in the ground and promptly informed a paleontologist named J. Willis Stovall at the University of Oklahoma. Stovall recognized the value of these fossils, as the bone bed contained the remains of various Morrison Formation taxa, including Stegosaurus and Apatosaurus. To extract the bones, Stovall sought help from the Works Progress Administration. However, the WPA policy only allowed workers who lived in the same county as the excavation site, which posed some problems. Without many paleontologists present who could identify fossils and knew what to look for, many specimens were likely missed, and some things that weren't actually fossils were mistaken as them. Ultimately, while many fossils were saved and put to good use, the excavation was messy and there were few good records of the specimens that needed to be sorted out. Despite this, an important realization was made when Stovall recognized that some of the bones that had been salvaged appeared to have come from a very large theropod. He decided that this creature needed to be named as a new genus and species, 
and he came up with the name Sorophaganax Maximus, meaning, Big Eater of Lizards. However, it was not Stovall himself who first published the name for his new discovery, but a journalist named Grace Ray, who visited the excavation site in 1941. The issue of Natural History containing Ray's article was published in June of that year, and Ray is now usually credited with the naming of this animal since it was the first time it had been published anywhere. However, the article did not contain a scientific description of the animal, so the name Sorophaganax maximus became what is known as a nomen nudum. For many years, the name remained a bit of a mess, and to make things more complicated, it was discovered that the genus name Sorophaganax had already been given to a tyrant flycatcher bird and actual lizard eater in 1831. As a result, the name could no longer be used for the dinosaur. In 1995, paleontologist Dan Chur came in to clear up the confusion a bit. He not only properly described the material known for the dinosaur, but he also proposed a new name for the genus to include all the specimens he found referable to a distinct taxon from Allosaurus. This is when Sorophaganax was introduced to the world as the Lord of the Lizard Eaters. In 1998, paleontologist David Smith conducted an analysis of the remains of the rarest Allosaurus individuals, as well as fossils attributed to Sorophaganax. He found that most of the bones did not differ enough from each other to justify a distinct genus. Smith proposed that the larger forms were simply a different species of Allosaurus, renaming Sorophaganax maximus to Allosaurus maximus. However, some paleontologists still classify Sorophaganax as a distinct genus due to the unique fossil vertebrae that belong to this animal. These vertebrae are quite different from those of Allosaurus, although other elements show some similarities. It's important to note that the remains of this giant allosaurid are incomplete, making it difficult for paleontologists to identify many features that could be distinct and would provide evidence in support of a separate taxon. Sorophaganax is one of my favorite dinosaurs. If new studies get released about it, maybe I'll make another video. Have a good day everyone and if you'd like more don't forget to like and subscribe.